All right, welcome everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Citizens Advisory Committee on Measures of Expenditures. And it's Thursday, uh, January 12th. So let's start the meeting by uh, saluting our flag. Won't you please join me? All right, at this time, I'd like to call on uh, my committee members to see if there's any modifications to the agenda that members would like to advance. All right, not seeing any. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, T Tammy or Sean, do you guys have any modifications to the agenda? No. No, no modifications. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll move on to public comment. So if there's any public comment on a non-agendized item, members of the public here in, in the uh, Board of Supervisors Chambers or online can, uh, can raise their hand to uh, offer a public comment. Not seeing any in the room, any online? All right, very good. All right, well, let's move on to uh, our discussion items. Uh, uh, the first order of discussion is approval of the November 10th, 2022 Action summary. Um, is it possible to get a copy of that put on the, the board here? The screen, I should say. Did you want to? You yeah, can share your screen. I, my thing is not hooked up. Oh, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to? Oh, no. All right, so we're having some technical difficulties here, but we'll come back to this um, discussion item number one just momentarily. So let's move on to discussion item number two, uh, a county administrative office update. Sean, what do you have for us? All right, good morning, Chair Robbins, members of the committee, uh, Sean Quincy with the county administrative office. A um, couple quick updates for you. Um, we are in the final stages of hiring our Measure Z analyst who will um, assist this committee. Uh, they'll be uh, scheduled to begin in early February, so they'll be here for the March um, agendas and meetings with you. Um, I also wanted to give you <clears throat> an update on revenue projections for fiscal 23-24. Uh, we did have a meeting recently with our um, sales tax team and um, 
revenue projections continue to decline. Uh, I can't hear anything. Can you hear me, Tammy? Can you hear this? Check, check, check. Testing. Okay, I just heard you say testing, but okay. I haven't heard any of the meeting. Okay, can you hear me now, Tammy? Yes, I can. Okay, so I was just telling the committee that the updates from our office are uh, first around hiring the Measure Z analyst that your committee recommended to the board. Uh, the We're in the final stages. We are um, looking at the beginning of February for that staff member to begin. They would... Uh, if all goes well, they will be here at the beginning of the uh, March meetings when your committee begins to evaluate the applications. Um, and again, we want to express our gratitude and thanks for this committee's recognition of the need for that position. Um, the next update is around revenue projections. The revenue projections for Measure Z <clears throat> and other local sales tax continue to decline. Um, in October, we came to your committee and we projected about $14.7 million in revenue for fiscal 23-24. Those were based off of um, projections from back in the spring of last year. Um, our most recent projections have that down by about a million dollars. Um, so with ongoing costs, um, if... Yeah. We apologize, ladies and gentlemen. We have to shut down our, our uh, online feed and we'll be coming back momentarily. Thank you for your patience. So much. All right, we are back in session for our Measure Z meeting. Apologize, Tammy and, and Sean. Thanks for hanging with us. So, um, is it is it possible to bring up the uh, action summary from our November tenth meeting? All right. That is it. Yep. Now, Tammy and Sean, hopefully you guys can see that on your screen. So we're, we're looking at a copy of the minutes from our November 10th meeting. So do I have a motion uh, to accept this action summary? I move we approve the action summary. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Mr. Broncall. I do have a comment. Go ahead, sir. Uh, for the date to be corrected at the top. No problem. All right, so that, that correction will reflect November 10th, 2022. Any other comments from members of the committee? Tammy or Sean, do you guys have any comments on the agenda? No, I don't. No comment. Thank you. Any members of the public wish to make a comment on the motion at hand? I um, show Redwood Parks Conservancy with their hand up. That's what it says. Redwood Parks, go ahead with your comment, please. Oh, okay, they came back. <clears throat> I've had my hand up. Uh, this is Alan Yost with the Redwood Parks Conservancy, but it's for the general public uh, comment. We, uh, we, there were some technical difficulties that we were not able to uh, speak uh, then. So whenever uh, you can give me a chance to just make a general uh, comment. 
Yes, sir, just, just hold on momentarily and we'll come back to your comment, thank you. All right, so not having any uh, more public comments here in the room or online, can we uh, do a roll call vote? No. Uh, Tammy? Yes. Sean? Yes. Mr. Zemer? Yes. Justin? Aye. Ms. Miller? Yes. Sheriff? Yes. Bob? Yes. Nick? Yes. All right, and Ginger is absent. Motion passes. All right, thank you. All right, yeah, let's go back to public comment um, since we had some technical issues there. And the gentleman from the Redwoods Park Association, I believe that's what it was. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, it's uh, the Redwood Parks uh, Conservancy. Uh, my name is uh, Stal Munoz, and I'm the uh, development director. Uh, and I just wanted to share, we're getting uh, a grant from uh, Measure C to have um, lifeguards uh, in different uh, beaches of Humboldt County. So I just wanted to share the accomplishments uh, that we've had, um, you know, during this uh, last year, uh, really quickly. Uh, We've uh, we helped uh, three people have received water rescues. Uh, and I think uh, one of them was even uh, recorded. Um, four people were assisted in major medical emergencies. 12 people received medical aid. 23 uh, traffic uh, collisions have been uh, responded in collaboration with local fire and ambulance personnel. Um, the lifeguards have had 2,710 safety contacts in dangerous beaches like a big lagoon. Um, there's been 36 school water safety presentations to about uh, 900 elementary and middle school students from Hydersville to Ulrich. Uh, one boat operations with the U.S. Uh, Coast Guard and um, Humboldt Bay in six marine protected area interpretations and there's also been one boat duck helo ops with the Coast Guard. Um, and so there's been a lot of work that's been done with the uh, about 35,000 that you provided us and that we're hoping that uh, you also consider this uh, program in the uh, coming um, uh, funding uh, period. Um, I think uh, there's also some uh, difficulty because one of the lifeguards uh, was also wanting to speak, but I think he hasn't been able to be get uh, connected so thank you for your support and uh, keep us in line. Thank you so much, sir. All right. We, we have one more, oh, okay. Dylan Clev, massacre this name, Dylan Clevenger. Dylan, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead, Dylan. Hey, thank you. Yeah, so Clevenger, that's my last name. Excellent pronunciation. I just wanted to piggyback on what Sal said. I'm um, one of the lifeguards. I'm not the one who directly gets benefited from this funding. That's my partner, Shannon. And I just wanted to piggyback on what Sal, uh, what Sal said real quick and just go ahead and emphasize that, you know, we work with a lot of these other agencies that receive Measure Z funding, the local um, fire departments, the sheriff's office, um, you name it. And we work with anybody. We're lifeguards. A lot of times, you know, you think lifeguards just sitting up in the tower. And that's not what we do here on the North Coast. Obviously, everyone knows it's extremely dangerous. And we're just proud of um, the service we provide. Another thing, too, is that we're a new program. And in these numbers, these contacts, you know, it's difficult to quantify um, just how much of an impact you can have having a talk with somebody on the beach especially somewhere like Big Lagoon where kids are going down with their parents, everyone thinks it's safe to go look for agates and people get swept off by a sneaker wave. So we're out there, we're working hard. Um, it makes us feel great to be supported by the Measure Z funds. And even though funds are tight, yeah, like, like Sal said, keep us in mind and thank you for the, uh, for the short amount of time. Thank you, Dylan, stay safe out there. Um, any other public comment online? Thank you so much. All right, let's move back to the uh, county administrative office update. Sean, you were telling us about revenue projections. Sure. Uh, thank you, Chair Robbins. <clears throat> so as I was saying, the uh, revenue projections that we are operating under now for fiscal 23-24 are about a million dollars less than what we reported to your committee back in October. We're looking at it, but we're projecting uh, just under $13.7 million. Um, and uh, ongoing costs for next year, which includes um, 
about $200,000 that will not be in 24, 25. We're looking at about $11.5 million in already dedicated costs. So initial projections for 23, 24 are a little bit over $2 million, about $2.1 million. Um, if we extrapolate that out for the next couple of years, uh, we do have some projections, but that's gonna leave about $2 million if trends continue for revenue and expenses. Um, so just wanted to make your committee aware of that. As always, those figures are subject to change. Um, I think we will have, uh, we might be able to have another revenue update um, come the beginning of March, but we wanna put out an announcement that funding is available and right now it's looking like we were gonna go um, and if, if we do announce how much, exactly how much funding is available, it would be about $2.1 million would be the most conservative projection. All right, before I open it up for comment and questions of folks here in the room, uh, Tammy or Sean, do you guys have any questions or comments that you wanna start off with? I don't have any. All right. Thank you, Tammy. Nothing thank you at this time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Sean. Committee members here in the room. Glenn, go ahead, sir. Uh, does the 11.5 include uh, whatever reductions that we would recoup based on unfilled <sighs> staffing positions and so on, or does that assume full staffing? That assumes full staffing. Okay. So given the history of the fund then, in general terms of magnitude, what would you, you know, I mean, that the 2.2 is going to be ugly to say the least. What could we reasonably think about, you know, in a, just in a concept way, mm -hmm. as, as an average, say for the last three or four years, what kind of rollback and unfilled position refunds essentially to the fund have we seen? I think it was, you could safely assume about 10% of those ongoing costs. Um, go kind of go back to the go back to the fund. I can't hear anything again. So the question was maybe it's me. The question was Sean, um, just a second. It, it's not how, you. This Zoom keeps muting. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear can you hear me now, Tammy? Yes I can. Thank okay. you. So the the question was what percent of the ongoing costs each year uh, for county staffing basically go unspent due to unfilled positions. And without doing too much kind of looking into it, I was starting to look into it before the meeting. Um, I would say about 10% of that each year, give or take. And remind me of the timeline when that number becomes solid enough that the staff would feel comfortable recommending the expenditure of it to the committee? So our mid-year, we're getting ready for the mid-year budget that occurs in February. And around that time, or at that time, is when we begin to talk to county departments so that they can give us estimated um, year-end expenditures for various funds and budget units. So that's when we would start to firm up the numbers. And in March, I would come back to the committee with uh, the numbers that we do have at that time. Thank you, Glenn. Anyone else from the committee have a comment or question? All right, very good. So let's move on to discussion item number three, uh, the approval of the final application period. Um, I believe we have, we have finalized the application itself, and this is just to finalize the application period. So the proposed opening is tomorrow, uh, Friday, January the 13th, with a closing of Friday, February 17th. Uh, for just over a little over a month of applications being open. Um, let, me, uh, let me open up here to my fellow committee members. We'll, we'll start online again. Tammy or Sean, any, any comments or um, desire to amend the, uh, the proposed uh, application period? I don't have no any. comment from me. Okay, thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Sean. All right, let's go to the, here in the room. Um, any committee members have a comment or desire to see it moved? Go ahead, Glenn. I, I assume that this, it, since it was proposed by staff, in the past we've been able to get the application packets about a week before our first meeting. 
So I assume that there's sufficient processing time for staff and so on to still allow us to have, say, a week to review these before the first meeting. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what. <clears throat> That's the reason why we proposed the timeline that we did, is so that it's enough time to gather everything, get everything together, and send it out to the committee before that first meeting in March. And Sean, a, a follow-up question on, pro, not a process, but on just availability, right? Committee members will still have the option of coming to the courthouse here and getting a hard copy, or will, in essence, uh, otherwise we'll get a zip file with all the applications in it, correct? Absolutely. All right, well, that, that works for me. Um, can I get a motion to approve the proposed application period starting on Friday the 13th and ending on Friday, February 17th? We have a motion from Glenn. A second? Second. Seconded by our sheriff. Um, any committee members have any comments on the action item? Any comments from folks here in the room or online? All right, very good. Roll call vote, please. All right, Ms. Trent. Yes. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Mr. Zemer? Yes. Ms. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Sheriff? Yes. Mr. Bronkle? Yes. And Mr. Cole? Yes. Motion passes. Excellent. We are at the end of our agenda here. So um, without further ado, let's adjourn this meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you.